Coyotes are incredibly adaptable animals that have successfully made urban areas their home. They are present in cities across North America, and sightings are more and more common. They typically establish territories within parks, cemeteries, golf courses, vacant lots, and suburban neighborhoods. Any area that offers a blend of shelter, food, with limited disturbance. We will look at some of the research that's been done in Chicago, LA, and Madison, Wisconsin. Coyotes in cities have a varied diet. They primarily consume small mammals such as rodents and rabbits, which does help manage urban pest populations. However, their diet may also include birds, insects, fruits, and vegetables. Scavenging is common, with coyotes eating garbage, pet food left outdoors, and occasionally roadkill. We'll address them eating cats in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Amy, a retired science teacher and wildlife rehabilitator. Welcome to my channel, where I make videos on wildlife conservation and organic gardening. This is my neighbor, part of a small group that lives in the woods behind my neighborhood. There are an estimated 1,500 to 2,000 coyotes living in the Chicago area. Urban Coyote Research Project has found that coyotes form stable territories even within densely populated urban areas, often overlapping with human neighborhoods, yet they remain mostly unseen. Research examining Cody coyote scat shows significant dietary diversity, highlighting their role in controlling urban pests, but also highlighting the potential sources of human wildlife conflict, such as getting into the trash and getting into yards to eat outdoor pet food. In rural areas, coyotes are often active during dawn and dusk. Urban coyotes demonstrate more behavioral plasticity, changing their activity patterns from daytime and rural settings to more nocturnal and cities to avoid human activities. Coyotes in Madison, Wisconsin have demonstrated remarkable adap adaptability, utilizing a combination of natural and human-made corridors, such as green spaces, walking paths, and stormwater channels. They can move easily through the city. David Drake of the University of Wisconsin's Urban Canide Project tracks coyotes in the city. I have an article that I'll put in the description with all the links to the studies I read. Interestingly, in the study, Drake's team looked at the interaction between coyotes and red foxes in the city and found that there is less hostility between these two species, presumably because food is more abundant and they don't have to compete for limited resources like in more rural areas. In urban Madison, coyotes maintain a diverse diet, such as rabbits and rodents, but they have also been observed scavenging on roadkill and occasionally consuming fruits. There is often concern about coyotes eating cats, both domestic and feral. Fear of pet predation is typically the biggest cause of human coyote conflict. Cats do fall prey to coyotes and occasionally small dogs. However, these numbers are smaller than many pet websites lead us to believe. In fact, many cats preyed upon are not people's pets, but sadly, feral or homeless cats. Several studies have been done where coyote scat is collected and examined. A study done in Los Angeles, California, showed a higher proportion of cats killed. As the study in Los Angeles looked at 3,100 coyote scat samples from various neighborhoods. The findings indicated that domestic cat remains were present in 20% of urban coyote scat. LA also has an estimated 1 million homeless cats, which is another issue. In contrast, a study in San Francisco found that domestic cats were present in only 4.5% of the samples. The primary components of the coyote's diet in San Francisco were human-provided foods, 
such as chicken and natural prey like pocket gophers. The study and the study in Chicago found that domestic cats appeared in only 1.3% of scat samples. The predominant food sources in Chicago were small rodents, fruit, and white-tailed deer. Protect your pet cats by keeping them inside and giving them opportunities to observe and toys to stimulate good health. Some cats enjoy being walked on a leash or going for adventures in a pet backpack. Studies have also shown that the presence of coyotes can lead to feral cats leaving an area, potentially benefiting some other wildlife like songbirds. This is Grace. I rehabilitated her and her siblings after their mother was killed by a farmer. Coyotes come into wildlife rehabilitation facilities for various reasons, typically involving human or environmental hazards such as vehicle collisions, orphan pups, or being caught in traps. Wildlife rehabilitators often serve as the critical link between a compromised animal and its eventual safe return to the wild. Please donate either money or supplies to a wildlife rehabber near you. Coyotes may suffer from mange, parasites, canine distemper, or poisoning from pesticides and rodent sides. Mange is an increasing issue among urban canines and is very contagious, but also treatable. Call a local rehabilitator or your Department of Natural Resources if you see a wild animal with mange. Coyotes rarely attack people. Most attacks have involved coyotes that are habituated to humans or have had rabies. Typically, coyotes avoid direct interaction with humans. However, habituation where coyotes lose their natural fear due to regular exposure, exposure to humans or easy food sources can lead to bolder behavior. So never, never offer coyotes food. What can you do to avoid conflicts? Well, never feed coyotes, secure trash cans from wildlife, don't leave pet food outside, monitor small dogs when they are outside and walk them on a leash, don't leave orchard fruits on the ground, and compost in containers. Yelling and waving your arms at a coyote is recommended to get them to run away. Just make sure they have an escape route. This is called hazing. Hazing doesn't harm coyotes. Instead, it communicates clearly that human areas aren't welcoming, thus reducing potential conflicts. Coyote hazing is a humane wildlife management technique used to discourage coyotes from becoming comfortable around humans. It involves using safe yet assertive actions to reestablish a healthy fear of humans and coyotes, teaching them to avoid areas where people live or frequent. They are dogs, they are smart, and they do learn. Besides yelling, you can also blow a whistle, bang pots, or spray with a garden hose. Never haze an animal that looks sick or injured or a mother with pups. Instead, call a rehabber or the authorities. Looking for some summer fun family activities? I have several wildlife activity books for children and a word search for teens and adults. It can be exciting and possibly scary to see coyotes in your urban neighborhood. Keep in mind that they have been roaming these places long before we built houses, so let's be respectful and keep our distance. Thanks for watching. Please boop that like button and have a fabulous sunny day.